Red Ray Gun Limited presents The Benji Nick Show Welcome, hello You're here for the Benji and Nick Show Only, wait, no Nick's not here Nick? I... I've killed him Oh my god It's, it's Jamie Anderson yeah, I got fed up with those post time calls, Benji, and, and uh, I'm afraid uh, I've I've done him in. You, so you've here gone, I am. You've gone nuclear. You, you, <laughs> you, you, you haven't just said I'm fed up with this. You've said right, I'm I'm getting rid of you. I'm bumping you off, and I'm I'm taking the chair. Yeah, exactly. Still in the podcast, and you're next, Clifford. Oh no, no. Well, you can, you can have it. I'm getting rid of this chair anyway. Um, yes. So uh, if if you haven't listened uh, before. This is the Benji Nick Show, and normally is the Benji Nick Show, and what we do is we talk about cult television in all shapes and sizes, as well as other forms of banter. Now, Nick uh, gives his uh, apologies for not being here this week. He's feeling a bit under the weather, uh, and so um, Jamie has stepped into the uh, into the fray. Is that the saying? Stepped into the fray. Fray sounds good. I think sounds good. Whatever it yeah, is, I'm here anyway. So uh, yeah, so we'll we'll be. Doing the usual old thing, the usual old bit of banter. In fact, this is going to work nicely because at the start of our podcast, we normally uh, do the old uh, Jerry Anderson store. So what better <laughs> way than to, to have a man who knows the uh, the Jerry Anderson store better than any of us? Is there any fun things on there at the moment, Jamie? Of course there are, Benji. Uh, I mean, it's, this is almost like I planned the whole thing just to promote some Jerry Anderson stuff, isn't it? This one big marketing ploy. Yeah, that's my life. Uh, well, do you know what? There are two exciting things that I would Ooh. love to tell you about. Uh, one uh, of one thing from the '90s and one thing from the '60s, both very exciting, I think. To stark contrast, there. Go on, then. Let, let's uh, let's re- okay, let's have the '60s first. I was going to go cr- chronologically is the best way to do it. I think so. Yeah. You so know, o- otherwise, it's chaos. <laughs> We'll keep it that though the whole way through. Uh, okay, so 1967, Captain Scarlet. It's in HD, the new oh. the new editions, and there's this amazing Blu-ray box set thing with a comic and a poster and art cards, and it's amazing. So that's out. A and huge, a, so a huge package really of Captain Scarlet <laughs> goodies there. Yes, uh, yeah, enormous package, and it, and it's only. <laughs> 25 English pounds or something. So, yeah, that's that's brilliant and beautiful and also has volume 4 Blu-ray with some extras on it, so that's pretty cool. Oh, magic. So that's Sounds the 60s really thing. Uh, and then and the 90s thing, it's not out yet, but I'm just so excited about it because I love the show. It's it's only Space Precinct on DVD. You're kidding, really? Oh, for the, nice. For the first time since it was re-released on DVD, I think in the year 2000... Core. That's a long, that's a long, that's 19, nearly 20 years ago. How well, freaky is that? Yeah, I know. It makes, it makes me feel older than I should feel, really. Oh, me too. I, me- I remember the I remember the eclipse where everybody said, uh, close your eyes and don't look at the sun. And what did everybody do? They all just looked at the sun <laughs> and whatever. Everybody did it. And yeah, but yeah. That's like keep off the grass, isn't it? You're obviously going to get straight on it. Straight away, you're going to say, oh, I don't mind burning my retinas. Why, why not? Eh? <laughs> It's a bit more extreme than getting on the grass, I suppose. I suppose it is, but yeah, that's a huge, uh, a huge first then, really, for for the, you know the show and its its modern form on DVD. Has it gone any? Has it undergone any cosmetic uh, restoration or anything? Oh, there'll probably be some clean up and stuff like that. And I think on the old DVDs, the title music cut off at the end or something, and it won't <laughs> cut off anymore. And yeah, it's just very exciting. I love that show. I was nine or ten when it came out so to have that out is brilliant but it's not out till november so i don't know what i'm telling you now yeah but it's excited is, is it an exclusive probably not it's probably bit you would have it would have been announced but i mean it's a near exclusive it was exclusive <laughs> yesterday and uh you know oh, uh, it's, a, it's a sort of belated exclusive <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's it's basically not exclusive but but it is really it's, uh, a, but yeah, it's you... a non-exclusive right here on the benji and nick show without nick <laughs> the Benji yeah. Nick Show without Nick. And so f- the link to uh, to buy these goodies is shop.jerryanderson.co.uk. Are there any special codes that are still active? I can't remember. They're, we've had a few, haven't we? <laughs> oh, God, there are, yes. I'm just trying to remember what they are. There was um, a- attack, attack, attack. All one no, word. No, destroy, 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 Benji. That's the one, yeah. Oh, gosh, I got I mean, my I c- own... 
I can no. make it attack, attack, attack if you like. A special one just for you. We we could do. We could do attack, attack, attack. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we can definitely do that. Okay, well, fine. We'll attack, attack, attack. We'll we'll get you 10% off your first order at the Jerry Anderson store. How's that? Look at that. I mean, that is a damn good offer, isn't it, really? And that and that's applied to everything, is that, in, in the store? Yeah, absolutely, Benji. So everything. if you want to get a bit of Captain Scarlet on Blu-ray, there you go, you got yourself 10% off. Can't knock it, can you, really, guys? Well, it's better than a kick in the teeth. Well, it is. Or 10% that. on... <laughs> yeah, it's more expensive if you type in attack, attack, attack. You don't want to miss that one out. It's basically, basically voluntary, uh, voluntary ripping yourself off there. Uh, great fun, great fun. So today, uh, as it was posed last week, later on we'll be talking uh, about Star Trek, no less. Uh, the episode uh, entitled, which has slipped from my ni- my mind now, actually. It's Balance of Terror. Balance of Terror, that's it. Yes, I should know. I watched it this morning. Um, <laughs> you, you're better at this than me, really. Um, but we'll be talking about that later on. Which I'm really looking forward to. Are you a Star Trek fan, Jamie? Well, look, I, I watched uh, lots of Next Gen when I was a kid, and also original series, in that um, that weekday evening BBC Two slot, which I miss so dearly. Oh, I it was know. such a great slot for cult TV. I, I wish that was still around. Um, so, yeah, I, I do remember, but I haven't actually watched original series Star Trek for ages, and I mean, like, probably, probably nearly a decade. So it was quite exciting to revisit this. To slip back into it. And, and yeah. it's funny, isn't it? It's, especially now, when it's on Netflix now, and it's... Uh, it's gorgeously uh, restored, and it looks it looks beautiful. Um, so it's nice to finally is to have it in a you know an accessible format, I suppose. Really, it's the right time and way to watch it or rewatch it. I I have to say, I really really enjoyed it. I won't I won't say anymore. I won't spoil it for later. Well, there yeah, we'll we'll touch on that a little bit later on. But first, we have the emails. Nick has forwarded me some of the emails here. So I'm going to delve into the the email satchel. No less. Shall I forward one to you, uh, Jamie? Would you like to read one <laughs> yeah. out? I can certainly try. I mean, I've got, I've got a good one for you, today. actually. All right, let's have a look. Yeah, have a rummage around, get a good one, and send it over. Have a rummage. See what you can find. <laughs> I wanted to make a rummaging sound then, but I don't have any um, stuff for Foley sound effects here, sadly. I've got a bin, but I don't particularly want to... Uh, to to rumble rumble around rummage around in that that would that would be hideous wouldn't it i've got one to rummage what? hang on oh wow here we go okay so look at oh he's got something yeah that's the best one right there. oh marvelous okay well i will forward this one over to you jamie and you can uh, check this one out so doopy doopy doo where's the forward button very technical here I hope you're going to keep this in the podcast, Benji. Always. That's part of our charm. It's it's <laughs> rough and ready, <laughs> rough and ready, and <laughs> sort of that's 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 our appeal. There we go. You should have an email. This one's a fun one, actually. Pretty much, it's it's the perfect timing because it is pretty much spot on for you, Jamie. Is it? Uh, have a little. Yeah, yeah, you'll enjoy it. Well, I'm just waiting for it to arrive, Benji. <laughs> It should be there. Oh, uh, well, you know, my, my email's a bit slow and... Uh, Somebody has to deliver it by hand. Yeah, it, it, a pigeon will crash into the window any moment carrying a small handwritten card, I'm sure. Well, one uh, hopes, one hopes. To make sure... It's the lifestyle out here in Wales, Benji, that's the problem. Oh, Welsh. Is, is it nice out there today? I heard it was... You said it was raining hideously this morning. Well, I didn't say hideously. I said it's raining incredibly hard because I'm so pleased to see the rain. Oh, aren't we all? I know yesterday I opened my the French doors. Don't know why they're called French doors. I opened them up and just, just embraced the fact that it was raining and it was cold and it was not hideously uh, stuffy anymore. Yeah, it's 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 blooming lovely, isn't it? Uh, Benji, you're going to have to read one out because I've still got no email here. you still so. not got it. I'll read a different one out and hope that... Um... <laughs> <laughs> I'll, make a, I'll make a ping sound when it comes in. Yes, please do. It's all gone pear-shaped. So I've got one here. It says, Hello, chaps. Enjoyed the podcast as usual. Thank you for the high praise regarding the magazine covers. I'm glad you like them. Oh, this is from Cole Grayus. Well, we we do. We always love 
uh, the artwork that, that you send in, Cole. Um, this week's one is just as good as well as, as ever. Uh, it's the usual Benji and Nick show, the weekly magazine, issue 22, every Sunday, 13p. Glad to see it's not uh, going up in price, otherwise <laughs> I'd have to have a word. Um, it says here, a free, fantastic Jerry Anderson store voucher inside. And it's got the Anderson A up there. It says, inside this week, your emails, the unmutual competition, many tangents, uh, unwilling guest star Jamie Anderson returns. Well, actually, it's the opposite. He's willing. He's here under well, his... Uh, well, he's... Re- reasonably willing, Benji. Pe- peer pressure, peer pressure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Briggs pressure. Uh, and uh, Benji and Nick chat about Star Trek The Bounce of Terror. Well, we don't, but, uh, but you know, we might. Well, we won't, because he's not here. Um, But carrying on with the email, it says, um, I did send you a subscription page with Peter Cushing reading an old issue along with Arthur Askey's Flame Retardant Glass as sponsor, but you must have missed it. I was sent that one by Nick, actually. We had a good old giggle about that. Such smashing stuff every week. I love everything that you bring to the podcast. Uh, It says here, I know you've got the picture of Tom Baker reading the first issue of the Benji Nick Show magazine as it's on your official Facebook page. I saw that. Oh, it's good, that one. It's great fun. Uh, me and Nick uh, met up with Tom uh, this week, actually, or the week that would have just gone. But I'll save I'll save that conversation for when Nick's on here. But we had a great, oh, great old giggle. Um, it was swelteringly hot though out. It was it was like a horribly hot day. But the day with Tom, it was well. Morning with Tom was wonderful. But we've got here, speaking of official Facebook pages, I think Mr. Benji should set his own one up uh, or maybe have an official Benji and Nick show page. Uh, if you do, I know a bloke that could supply the artwork. Well, it's funny <laughs> you should say that. So so I, I considered the, the option of uh, setting up my own page, but I sort of don't like this idea of having it sort of lingering on 20 people for about a year be like oh check out then they'll be like oh look there's there's (laughs) you know it strike me as the vain sort of egotistical type (laughs) where it might damage your self-worth just think it'd be funny just just be funny (laughs) hi guys all all 20 of you um but i'm gonna set one up anyway for for work and fun but also uh, me and nick had a discussion this morning and we have uh, well i put together uh the benji nick show official facebook page um, which How can you be find f- it, Benji? You can find it uh, facebook.com uh, forward slash the Benji and Nick show. It's as simple as that. That is very Ron Seal of you to, to oh, do well, that. Oh, well, you know, I was, I was thinking about just putting it something completely different. Destroy, destroy, destroy. Facebook.com uh, BBC History Magazine. Um, and just <laughs> <laughs> it says every week, Kim, yeah, you didn't cover. Um, I'm terrible. I actually have a copy of it here. Yes, uh, Benji, you didn't cover um, who really started the Civil War in your podcast this week. No, I didn't. <laughs> Do you know, I'm, su- I'm such a sucker for um, for people phoning me up, selling me things. I got phoned up the, by the BBC magazines department, and they just said, "Do you want uh, three issues of History magazine for a quid?" <laughs> so I just said, "And you went yes." I went, "Yeah, why not? What for a quid? Yeah." <laughs> It's a lot of reading for for a and quid, isn't it? There's no catch. No, there's no catch. They said you can you can carry them on for a fiver or something. So I said, hell yeah. Oh. So, so I've got myself yeah, I've got myself nice a great bargain cu- there. Yeah, I think so. I can read about medieval monks behaving badly, <laughs> or I can, I can go uh, crazy here. Um, the horror of the Black Death. Um, uh, a Mary Aining do- dinosaur hunter. And if I'm really feeling uh, ambitious, I can go for. Um, uh, the birth pains of the NHS, the gunpowder queen, um, madness. There you wow. go. So, so awful Benji, qu- you've, got, know- you've got a trio of parody magazines there. They're not real. <laughs> I just did them myself in my spare time. <laughs> Beautifully done. Multi-talented Benji Clifford. Uh, well, you know, that's what I'm all about, Jamie. So have you got a, have you received your email yet? Jamie? Yeah. I've got an email. Oh, excellent. Would you like to read it out? I can certainly try. Uh, it's from Richard. Oh. <laughs> and uh, Richard says, Hi, N and B, with an Not ampersand. Today. Yeah. Hi, uh, um, hi, J and B. Let's say that, like shall it. we? Like it. Uh, enjoying your podcast greatly. Ideal late Sunday listening while sat in the garden with a glass of wine. Oh. oh that sounds nice, doesn't it? Yeah. I might do that later on, actually. Listen to 
you know, Definitely. not this one. Uh, <laughs> I was racking my memory for something properly obscure to recommend for a discussion, and the only thing I could think of was Starfleet, also known as X Bomber. I thought this was a good idea and had a quick shifty on YouTube. For the love of God, don't. <laughs> uh, Mango crossed with Thunderbird seemed like a good idea, I suppose. Time has been bloody unkind. <laughs> Keep up the good work, buck up, etc. Ta-ra, Richard. <laughs> so well, you're not a fan then? <laughs> he's clearly not. No, well, look, I didn't insert any words there. That's actually Richard's words. I wasn't the one saying, for, for the love of God, don't. I think Starfleet is quite cute, although I have to say I've never really properly sat through any episodes of it. Um, but you know, it's not it's not an Anderson show. If he'd said, you know, you could look you could watch Terror Hawks, but I checked it out and it's so terrible, don't bother, <laughs> I would have been offended. But yeah, Starfleet so, have you seen Starfleet, Benji? I have seen Starfleet. It's it's a strange one, isn't it? It's sort of it's quite impressive to look at. It has it has the uh the hallmarks of, you know, the Anderson mm. sort of uh variety you know the way the structure of the show and, and some of the model stuff on, in this is really yeah. good but um it was one of those ones really uh, i suppose i suppose this is this is a nice thing to say to you but i suppose with these type of shows you kind of feel like if they're if they're not a jerry anderson thing then i always kind of feel like it's a bit of a fraud and I, I, it sounds yeah. awful to say but it's only that's just you know it's like putting on a, a comfortable pair of shoes isn't it really it's like you know <laughs> your you dad's know, like a comfortable pair of shoes well, you know he's like you know where you are with those shoes you know you can put those shoes on and you know that if you walk down the road you're going to get there in one piece however there might be some really nice other pairs of shoes but if you put them on it might feel re- relatively similar but you start walking you think oh yeah i don't like the oh, fit of these these are filled with broken glass yeah <laughs> <laughs> and then you have to spend about 12 hours in A&E uh, yeah. in pain. That is a great analogy for watching Thunderbirds versus Starfleet. Nice. I th- well, I think, I think it works. I think it works. <laughs> but it's an interesting one. Perhaps me and Nick will cover it. You know, I think we, you we, should, you know. We, we've got so many things to, to cover. Um, oh, what was the show that Nick said? I, I said, oh, where is it? Hold on. It's on network, um, their YouTube um, network distributed. Well, they've got hundreds of things, thousands. It could be anything. It could be anything. They, there was another um, a similar style television program which has recently got a a, uh, a DVD release, and I posted it to Nick. Space Patrol. Ah, uh, posted it to Nick, and yes. he said he, he wasn't a fan of that one. He said he could. He had, it's very for similar reasons, I think, really. But that's. Uh, I always think Space Patrol is is quite sweet and quite fun, but also slightly odd as well. Well, it's da- it's it was Dad's ex business partner Arthur Provis and Roberta Lee, who he produced two puppet series for in the early days. It was their concoction, which was a sort of mm, half no half assed isn't a fair term, is it? Um, uh, a kind of attempt to mimic Firewall XL Five that slightly missed the mark. Is that a fair way of putting it? Well, I think that is a very mm. fair way of putting it there. It's, it's one of those, it looks very similar, like you could, at a glance, you could almost, but it, it hasn't quite got that, that level of, uh, I suppose, charm is the word I'm looking for. I think it's the charm and the finesse as well. You know, Derek Medding's effects work on, on everything that he did was just so astoundingly good. You see things, even Starfleet, X-Bomb or whatever it was, um, where they did all the model work, whereas Derek would film everything at high speed. So when you slowed it down, it would give a sense of weight and scale. Everything oh, in Starfleet wow. was was filmed at, at normal 24, 25 frames a second. So none of it had that weight and scale, and, and that's part of the magic, which these things kind of miss out on, I think. It's funny how things like that do make a huge difference. Uh, I've, got, I've got some friends, and they're big in the sort of world of... Uh, they love sort of Thomas and friends and all that sort of thing. They work in, in that those fields, and they were saying yeah. that the show changed a lot when they moved from film to um, to modern digital uh, uh, cameras. And they say because of the, it's something to do with the frame rate, mm. it just lost um, the sense of believability and scale. And because I think they, I think they slowed slowed it down as well to give the s- steam a, a, a more of a weight to it. Yeah, um, more scale. It's amazing. But it's it's funny, isn't it? Things like that. It does make a huge difference. But um, yeah, I'll, I'll read another email out here. 
Oh, yeah, so, since this is the emails bit, Benji, we should probably do that and not talk about um, <laughs> Space Patrol. Uh, it's all a bit banter, isn't it? It's all, it's all good. It's all like a nice pair of shoes, Jamie. <laughs> Glass free. Glass free, yes. <laughs> uh, so, so I've got this one here um, from um, Sarah, uh, Sarah Bere or Berrett. Uh, well, do I prefer you... Beret. Definitely prefer Be- Beret. Beret's classy, isn't it? It's very yeah. classy. I like, I like Beret. That. Sarah Beret. Uh, <laughs> dear Benji and Nick, um, just a quick email to tell you how much I'm loving the podcast. I always get excited when I see a new episode pop up on my app. Uh, they're the perfect thing to listen to when I'm working around the house or on a project. My latest project has been finishing a pair of roly-poly dolls for the SLC Comic-Con. Uh, see attached photo. Let's have a look then. We'll just scroll down. We've got the wonderful... Oh, that's amazing. So we've got David Tennant and Jenny. Jenny, the Doctor's daughter, um, recently uh, taken on uh, for a big finish... Uh, spin off there absolutely wonderful stuff here um, especially loving the uh, the David Tennant quiff going on um, if, if Jamie's just watching me there making this sort of thing with my hands doing a, a, an interesting a, quiffy a, gesture a, a qu- yeah, it's, <laughs> yes it is uh, <laughs> the less said the better um, yep. but it's absolutely brilliant stuff going on there please do uh, keep uh, sending things in like that because it's lovely to see what people get up to and you've clearly got a fantastic talent there I'll send it to you Jamie but uh, the email will probably take about 90 years uh, to arrive yeah well i mean i I still love to see it anyway perhaps best if you put it on the benji and nick show facebook page then eh yeah there's an idea indeed i like the sound of that i think it's going to have to happen um just carrying on with the email here it says i'm not quite done with the jenny doll but one or two episodes of your brilliant podcast should do the trick Uh, i also have a semi-serious question for a future podcast my dad likes to binge watch Magnum P.I. at least once a year, and his favourite episode is the two-parter known as Deja Vu, featuring Peter Davison. Now, I know it's not necessarily what you guys would normally watch, but I think it would be hilarious to hear your review of Peter's performance as a bumbling major do- major domo? What on earth is major domo? This is the bit where I just don't know what words are. Oh, that's um, um, a sort of uh, lead caretaker in a sort of religious establishment, isn't it? I, I believe, yes, head butler, uh, steward, palace, uh, concierge. I, do you know what? I've never heard that word before. It shows... it's, a, it's a great term, though, isn't it? I like it, Major Domo. <laughs> I don't know. How do you even say it? Do you say Major Domo? Or is it Major Domo? Major Domo. Major Domo. I, th- I think it's Major Domo. Anyway, yeah. That, so Nick Nick Briggs would normally be perhaps a Major Domo of the Benji and Nick show. <laughs> perhaps, I don't know. I don't know. He's, 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 he can be my butler if he wishes. Yes. Um, <laughs> I'll never turn down a butler. Um, it's, <laughs> it's also... <laughs> That's it's also the uh, the closest I'll ever get to convincing my dad to watch Doctor Who or sci-fi in general, no matter how much I nag him. Best wishes, Sarah Bere. P.S. I hope I haven't missed the deadline for the audiobook. I wanted to write in earlier, but I never know what to say, and I'm generally quite rubbish at writing emails. Was that intentional? If not, because the picture is between the quite and rubbish at writing emails. <laughs> so it's just got this perfect gap there. Either way, it was it was class. That is um, a brilliant visual joke. It, it was perhaps translated perfect for audio. <laughs> perfect, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Um, but yeah, that's an interesting uh, question there. Um, because Nick's not here, we agreed that we would keep um, competitions open, and I assume that would also maybe stand for that one. I'll have to have a word with him, um, but we can certainly let you know if that's still. Uh, open. Um, I can't remember. I think we do have a competition going, but I, we haven't got a script, and I didn't have time to listen. So if there is, just assume, just assume that it's still. Do you love it? It's just that that's what we're all about on the Benji and Nick show. It's uh, cobbled the, together. The organize, organization and administration is just phenomenal. Benji, that's I'm part of the loving fun, it. isn't it? it? You know, it's it's we we do the we do the uh, the big finish podcast which is all it's all written down it's all nice and neat and tidy and then this one we just kind of just say well why not why not so we've got <laughs> anything one more goes anything goes yeah you know why not uh, we've got one more email here before then we will talk about uh star trek balance of terror uh, and this one here is uh from michael prescott and it says 
The obvious question, upon seeing the Romulan commander, uh, why didn't he exclaim, holy crap, that guy looks just like my dad. Um, love you guys, Michael T. Prescott, <laughs> sent from my Metro PCS 4G LTE Android device. Wow. Well, it's funny you should say that about the, the Romulan commander. I think he looks like Michael Portillo. <laughs> <laughs> He really does, doesn't he? <laughs> I couldn't stop. I couldn't unsee it after a while. I just, it's just Michael Patillo, isn't it? Really? I'm so glad you've said that after I've watched it. Otherwise, it would have ruined the whole thing for me. You were just sat there going, oh, when's he going to get out his Bradshaw's Guide of Trains and the UK <laughs> and start going on about Bradshaw's Guide to Seeing the Universe? And wearing a pair of salmon-coloured chinos. Oh, yeah, with, with a pair of orange uh, trousers with... <laughs> green shoes um <laughs> but yes so thanks you thank you for all your emails anyway um mm. as always we do love hearing from them and if you want to email us you can send us an email at podcast at nicholasbriggs.com uh, or if you go on to the um facebook.com forward slash the benji and nick show um there's a little button there which says send email and Ooh. it does just that it sends an email no way yeah hell yeah yeah it does so so you can just zap it straight over to us without having to cuts out the middle man or woman um so i said that on the big finish podcast this morning and it's, it's clearly made another appearance i think i like the pause um but yes so now Good comedy timing it, oh, that is oh, sorry, I you were about to do a drum roll and I interjected. I'm so sorry, Benji. Do it's, carry it's, on. No, it's, it's all right. It was probably a wise move. I saw my water making a weird tipping motion. I thought, <laughs> pushed it too far. <laughs> so now we're going to talk about Star Trek Balance of Terror. Uh, the fantastic, ep one of the best episodes, in my opinion, of Star Trek, the original series. Uh, from season one, episode 14, broadcast on December the 15th, 1966. Amazing. It's not even controversial to say it's one of the best episodes, is it? I, I don't think, well, it's in my opinion, but I, th I think I think it certainly is up there with, with one of the best episodes. And it's a great example, I think, of sort of uh, tension, you know, in a Star Trek episode. You are gripped to your seats yeah. Wanting to know what is happening and and what's going to happen next and how the, how they're going to get out of this one, <laughs> but of course they will. But, but no, of course I, they will. I I was might be, bear in mind, Benji. I haven't watched an episode of Star Trek for probably a, or original Star Trek for probably a decade. In my memories of it, you know how often times when you've watched something as a kid, nostalgia makes it feel like it was better than it actually was yeah totally for, for me weirdly for star trek nostalgia sent it the other way so in my mind the original series was well, it was all right but it, yeah my memories of it are not enjoying it that much but i have to say this was bloody great it's amazing how things like that can happen and the mind can sort of... I mean, it's like for me recently, I said, I think I said it last week, um, Lord of the Rings, I really didn't like the first one and I left, uh, we rented it and I just turned it off halfway through and, and got on with other stuff. And so I always felt that it was really boring, but actually um, I've started again watching it and it's completely... I thought, wow, this is really good. So I think sometimes your, your mind, you can just end up believing you know your own thoughts in a way of you <laughs> never believe your own thoughts i mean it's just a dangerous <laughs> I mean, way to I go said it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear i did but no it, i think one thing i would say and i don't know whether this is a, a good thing or, or not a good thing but i've only been watching these original star treks um since they've been uploaded to netflix and they've got uh, they've had all the special effects have been redone um, and so it's all it looks really swish and lovely. So the only thing I would say is having no experience of the original special effects that we used. And bear in mind that this episode, I think, is quite heavy on the, you know, it's it's all about the way the ships are moving around and, and fighting each other. Um, I do wonder how it would have looked with the original effects in there. As Do you know what I mean? I do. I mean, there are some... <laughs> There are some elements. Actually, do you know what? There's a, a bit where they're, they're, uh, the Romulan ship is hiding or going to hide in the comet's tail. Yeah. And that comet effect. I actually really love that. I think it looks beautiful. It's I, lovely. I, I don't know what the previous version looked like. But everything in there feels kind of uh, time appropriate. 
You know, oh, it, definitely, it's, definitely. It's not like we've got sort of, you know, 2018 CGI effects applied yeah. retrospectively. Um, but then there's things that, you know, there's like... <laughs> When the Romulan ship is under attack in a very classic kind of 60s and 70s sci-fi thing, there's masonry falling from the I ceiling. I was going to say that. Yeah, I, <laughs> I thought that. I thought, really? I thought, what, they built it out of? It's yeah. stone, yeah. But it's it's weirdly convincing and okay, despite the fact that you've got those really kind of rubbish effects. Because uh, that, I mean, you know, there must be... I guess, I guess falling masonry and dust and stuff is a lot cheaper than little pyrotechnics going off. Or just bits of metal or tin foil or, or yeah. I mean, I like to think it's a problem on on Romulan ships, you know, that, which is why they were so they were so quick to be able to jettison all the all the rubble. You know, you must think, <laughs> oh, no, more that more that bloody masonry's falling down again. Right, lo- load it into the torpedo base. Yep. It's going to take I'd, weeks to replaster that ceiling. Yeah, oh, I don't know. Use some art. <laughs> use some Artex. Get that. <laughs> Get that on there. That'll be fine. Slap it on. Sadly, um, we never got to see the, the ceilings of the Romulan ship. Otherwise, we'd have seen some <laughs> lovely textures up there. Oh yeah, you know they they, they really they really push the boat out, don't they? Do you know what I mean? Um, but I, I t- with the um, who's the chap who plays the the uh, the Romulan commander? Uh, Mark Leonard is it? Is that is right? It, yes, it is Mark Leonard. I thought he does a fantastic job in this one because he. The, the way that he plays him is he almost you can see the there's a bit of internal kind of turmoil he's frustrated yeah and slightly um slightly sort of he almost knows that he, he he's no match for for kirk in a way yeah but there's, this is there's there's so ma- there's so much going on in this story i think which is one of the reasons i really Definitely. enjoyed it i actually watched it twice and bear really? in mind, I only knew I was doing this about 12 hours ago or something. Uh, <laughs> I've watched it twice in that period because I enjoyed it so much. And it, that it's almost like a, it could just be a two-hander almost between um, between Kirk and the Romulan commander. Because it's so it's so much about them. And, and that although they, ne- they don't see each other until the final moments, the two of them kind of deducing what the other is thinking and and realising just how smart the other one is. It's, a, it's an amazing battle of wits without them ever communicating directly, which I just, I just loved it. I found it so convincing, it which is really is. unusual for 60s sci-fi, I think, generally speaking. And there's that wonderful, well, that level of uh, admiration for the others, that ever so, they're slightly sort of captivate, captivated by the others' moves, and they're thinking, oh, that's a... You know, interesting thing he's doing there. It's, yeah, uh, very nicely doesn't, done. Doesn't the commander describe um, Kirk as a sorcerer at one point? Yes, he does. I love that. Uh, yeah, mean, it was. He said, "Perhaps in another life we could have been friends." Yes. yes. Think, oh wow! You know, it's a great uh, moment. Was this the first time we see the Romulans? Yeah. So I, I, I did have a quick look up about this because I, I, you know, again Romulans and stuff in Star Trek mythology whatever i'm fairly aware of but had no idea of the background and yeah this the writer on this story who was benji <clears throat> the writer on this for this one was um paul schneider exactly paul schneider <laughs> <laughs> and he yeah he he basically invented the uh, the romulans and this is their first appearance and i just i love so the minute i heard romulus and remus as the yep. planets, the two planets on the other side of the neutral zone, and all that, all, that, all this zone. kind of kind of world building is so cool. I know, and the the lovely map with the kind of oh, I adore looking, that. That map is yeah. gorgeous, isn't it? Did you notice though, Benji, that the although they just said the twin planets Romulus and Remus on the map, it says Romulus and Romi, Romi. No, really? Yeah, R O M I I. So that's really that's a really so I, I'm guessing at some point that planet was renamed or something and the art department didn't get the note or they just thought ah, Remus is rubbish let's call it Romeo instead. How peculiar is that? It's, it's classic again though. It's the type of thing you can only get that that level of, of funniness in in sort of sixties telly things that they just think oh we'll let it go it's fine nobody don't worry will see about it, it again nobody will see it again yeah <laughs> and here we are all these years later picking it to pieces and being horrible but, but I, you know, it's it's Actually, for something to be picked to pieces, it's, it doesn't give you a lot to, to bite with, really. There's, it's just it good. It does not, no. And in fact, there's, there's so much more, again, watching it the second time, because the Romulus and Remus thing got me thinking. I was like, well, that, that must be Roman 
mythology. That must be kind of, not mythology, Roman history. And I had a little look. And yeah, Paul Schneider basically said, I wanted the Romulans to be like Ro the Roman Empire that had made it into space. And Which there's there's so makes... much about it. Yeah. Well, like when you see the uh, the soldiers with their helmets, those they look like melons have been sort of slapped <laughs> on their heads. Um, and the uniforms and that, there, there is that level of kind of, they they do have a very impressive sort of uh, regimented sort of feel to themselves. Well, it's all, all kind of classic Roman army, Roman culture stuff, isn't it? I mean, that the helmets look very Roman. I'm pretty sure that they had those so they didn't have to pay for more prosthetics to have more ears done. Because <laughs> at the time, I bet you the kind of rubber or whatever, foam rubber latex was quite expensive. So that's probably... Almost Probably a way to get out of it. A money-cutting thing, but well, stuff like, the, you know, the Centurion is the name and obviously Romulus and Remus and that sort of stuff. But even when, you know, when the um, the naughty chap uh, oh, sends, yeah. sends a transmission to say, uh, we're, we're pretty cool, we're doing pretty well out here, yeah. uh, which is against uh, the, the commander's wishes, he, he says, you're reduced by two ranks. That's Ooh. that's a Ro that's a Roman punishment. It's all like so. Paul Schneider must have had a kind of fascination with ancient Rome, which I think is really cool to bring it into this. It works. Things like that work as as well. It, you know, I, I I'm a big fan of kind of flipping concepts as well. Things like you know, like taking something of ancient history and modifying it to go into science fiction in the future. It's uh, it is incredible like that. And I mean, this whole episode is based really on. Um, on history itself you know it's it's, it's a case of uh the the enterprise being like an american sort of submarine i suppose really and the romulans being a, a german u-boat it's like got that sort of enclosed it's like it's like das boots in space um well, but, it's, but f f from the opposite perspective you're exactly right aren't you because it's schneider stole the story idea uh no not stole sorry um uh it was a homage to uh to two previous stories and films that he'd seen in the 50s. So The, en the, en the Enemy Below and Run Silent, Run Deep are two I've not 50s seen films. any of those, actually. Yeah, it's, it's basically the same. I've got, I mean, I've got the synopsis for The Enemy Below. Do you want to hear it? Yes, please, please do. Please do tell us. So during World War II, the USS Haynes, an American destroyer uh, escort, discovers a German U-boat in the South Atlantic. A dead, deadly duel between the two ships ensues, and Captain Morell must draw upon all his experience to defeat the equally experienced German commander. That is, I mean, that's just balance of terror, isn't it? That right? is Straight balance away. of terror. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I mean, but it's, it, I don't know. It, it doesn't, it doesn't feel derivative anyway. It's just, it's just it's lovely. A, it's a different thing in its own right, isn't it? Really, but he also doesn't. The you know the writer Paul uh, Schneider, he doesn't step away from adding other elements in. Uh, in that you've got the element of blatant uh, racism there uh, against um, Mr. Spock. Yeah. Keep your prejudices... Uh, was it keep your prejudices? In your quarters. In your quarters. Not on my bridge. I mean, um, I'd try to keep them off the ship, probably, rather than just yeah, leaving so, them in the quarters. I'd say, I'd say that's definitely a, a stern talking to in, in Kirk's office, if, if ever I've uh, seen one, you know. <laughs> But even at the end where, where Spock saves the guy, you know, I, I like Spock interjects and just says, uh, I'm incapable of uh, having emotions. I merely saved a fellow officer. You think, yeah, oh, he's I so just cool. saved a navigator. I mean, I, I, you know, didn't save you to try and make a point or anything. I mean, I think it was sort of passive, passive aggressive what Spock was really saying there. Oh, I think I think there's. <laughs> well, I can't feel. I'm incapable of feeling emotions. Come on, you you don't like him. He don't like no, you. There's a bit no. of that. He's been nasty to you. Um, but also, as well as that side of things, um, there's the whole um, funky wedding story going on as well. I know. I mean, that With, that I have to say, when I saw that at the start, I thought uh, like wedding. I just thought, oh, come on, because again, <laughs> you know, for the first few seconds, I've had this tainted, decade-old memory of original Star Trek being a bit naff, and that didn't do much to set it straight. But then, just that little undercurrent of what's going out there, uh, on out there at uh, what are the what are the things called Outpost Four or something? Oh yes, the uh, the out uh, the 
Yeah, the out, I think they're outposts, aren't they? With the yeah, bloke, yeah. the bloke, the captain of that who appears in a video looking like Norman Wisdom, putting all these <laughs> stupid facial expressions <laughs> there. So he does. He looks. He, I thought, what's wrong with him? I thought he looks. He just looks like he's he's gone crazy. A melty Norman Wisdom because he's he's a bit burnt, isn't he? Those prosthetics. He is a bit burnt, but it doesn't stop him from really push, pushing the boat out with those facial expressions. <laughs> um, well, <laughs> how would you feel if you'd been attacked with a crazy Romulan high energy plasma? Death ray. Well, not, I wouldn't feel like doing an impression of normal wisdom. <laughs> I <could tell> you <laughs> that. Probably be screaming up a point. lot of expletives. Um, but it, you know, it's. I mean, talking of the wedding, that hideous organ music. I, I thought, God, if I ever get married and I have to hear somebody playing that, um, I'd sack them. I'd, I'd have a. St- I'd give them a stern talking to. So, you know, buck, <laughs> buck up your ideas. Buy a new organ. That's dreadful. Leave your rubbish organ music in your quarters. Mm, where'd you get that much? from? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, leave you. <laughs> I don't want organ players on my bridge. Um, yeah, but it, what a what a great story and a testament uh, says here in the Wikipedia. Testament to how great this story is um, is that Balance of Terror um, is uh, was actually named um, to be the first digitally uh, remastered Star Trek episode, the first to be broadcast as well. So ah, clearly, understandably. from Star Trek HQ, um, there must have been. A unanimous decision that this was certainly up there as one of the best episodes of Star Trek. Yeah, and one of Gene Roddenberry's top ten, I think. I'd have to. I'd love to see his top ten actually. Yeah, but I'm it's pretty mostly sure it's from season one. Uh, yeah, yes, <laughs> I suspect so. You've got a fun uh, Gene Roddenberry story to tell us, haven't you? I do believe. Well, Benji. Uh, I- <laughs> Not really. Um, I mean, I've got I've got two generations of Roddenberry things to tell you. One is that uh, Gene and Dad um, had a meeting at one point at Pinewood. I don't wow. know if you knew that. No, um, no. So I think it was around um, sort of 1976. And Gene was in the UK um, with his son, Rod. And I don't know, Rod would have been tiny then, I guess, like two or three or something and um yeah gene turned up to dad's office and they chatted about star trek and sci-fi in general and where it should be going and the benefits of sci-fi and all that sort of stuff would have been loved to, loved to have been a fly on the wall there oh yeah absolutely um, and they also uh, drank an entire bottle of whiskey <laughs> well why not quite <laughs> you know if you're gonna do it do it in style but i think that's i think that's the sign of a, a, a good meeting if, if ever I've, I've i've heard one it's you know drinking the office dry drinking the office dry quite but you know two guys as well though who who by that point you know it's the, the mid 70s they both achieved a lot of you know what, what people look on now as you know, some of their most iconic things of were had you know it happened so i can imagine there must have been a mutual level of kind of respect there between both of them yeah they got i think they got on really well and that you know I, although i think gene's sort of social and kind of uh, ethical and moral uh themes that he wanted to insert are much more explicit mm-hmm. in star trek like you see here with the definitely the kind of the, the the intergalactic interplanetary racism thing going on, which is, I mean, it's really nicely handled in that story. I think. Um, I but, think so. But Dad was doing the same thing, you know, with like, pushing for equality in characters and stuff. So I, I think there was a lot of similarity between the two of them. I, w- I wonder what they might have got up to if they'd ever done anything in partnership. Well, if only. How can you imagine how brilliant that would have been? But I think one of the things it is certainly, you know, you, you get that feeling of space in the future is an inclusive place. Uh, and especially for the 1960s like I mean look at Star Trek this episode for example you have all diff- people of all different races and sexes on the bridge mm-hmm. doing their jobs uh, and I think that's so you know we, we struggle to achieve that now I know it sounds funny but it, not everything has representation quite like that and so I think it's great that you, you get in that in the 1960s yeah Really impressive, and but you know he was doing that against a lot of resistance at the time, wasn't he? I think Definitely, some of the networks yeah. were like, "Well, we're not going to show that then because you know you can't have a black woman on the bridge." And it's amazing uh, that he pushed pushed against it. What a, what a nice chap! But I, I um, spent some time with his son Rod uh, about eighteen months ago uh, at a convention in Washington, um, 
and he's a, a very very nice chap lovely wife and a lovely little kid um what's his kid called it's got a great name it'll come to me in a minute uh but i i was doing a, a panel at this event called escape velocity um with uh, rod roddenberry and adam nimoy wow so I, I thought I was, cool. you know, the, sort of the next generation uh, of, you know, people good, with the good iconic stages. <laughs> well, I, I, I was aiming for that, Benji. Thank you for, uh, <laughs> thanks for pointing it out. Uh, so we we were about to go on to do this um, this panel, and you know, there was a certain element in the in the build up where, you know, they were the guy who was doing the introduction was basically saying, all these great men are no longer with us, and I thought. Oh, I don't want this to be a bit, you know, down when we go on, so I'll make a little joke. Oh, no. That, that's... <laughs> forgetting, forgetting that American sense of humour is slightly different and, you know, also people's sensitivities about stuff, you know, change and some people deal with loss and grief in different ways. I like to deal with it with a bit of humour. Yeah. So just as, just as the guy is saying, and we're very lucky to be joined by the sons of these great men, blah, 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 and reading our names, I said, oh, I'm surprised they didn't just call our panel the Dead Dads Club. Oh. Now, <laughs> in my head, it was to make light of this kind of downy theme, but they both just looked at me and then looked at each other and walked on stage. There oh, was not gosh. even an attempt at a polite laugh. Even thinking about it now, Benji, I feel a bit sick that I... <laughs> It was said, yeah, but, but, but you know, it's it was made with the, the best of intentions to try and be like, you know, I'm sure they think, you know, our dads would think that was funny, but oh dear, Whew, tumbleweed. It's, we've tumbleweed. we've all been in those situations though. But I, I agree with you. I'm one, <laughs> you know, I like a, I like a laugh, and if you're in those situations, you've got to laugh. Otherwise, you know, you got to. What's the old saying? You either laugh or you cry. You know, it's exactly. It's good to kind of. But how funny, you know. Well, I cried inside after that. <laughs> I can assure you. Well, it goes back to what we said at the start of the podcast. Don't believe your own thoughts. Just say no. <laughs> just say no. Not today. Ignore Let's leave anything that. that comes up in your mind. You know, <laughs> just sit there, drink a cup of tea, and watch Star Trek. That's it. Perfect. Uh, you know, I think I think that's the best the best way to go, isn't it? Really. And I think there's a good note to leave it on as well. <laughs> <laughs> Have a cup of tea. Just watch Star Trek and don't believe your own thoughts. Yeah, in case you offend anybody. Okay, yeah, well, we've all we've all been there. You know, there's no easy way, is there? You, you just got to sit in your hole and start digging yourself out, not in. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, is you got anything to add to this discussion, or do you think we've uh, hit our mark? Oh, I think I think we've hit our mark. I mean, I would I would definitely recommend that people watch this story, even if you think you don't like original series Star Trek or if you like it and haven't watched it for a while it's just yeah there's so much going on it's actually inspired me to go and watch more original series Star Trek so thank you very much Nick Briggs for being ill <laughs> um, <laughs> to give you this chance yeah yeah it's very very kind of him to suffer for such a noble cause <laughs> <laughs> well I think I stand with you on this one you know I've spent a l I, I was never a big Star Trek guy um, I had no I wasn't of the you know, the generation of people who watched well I was of the generation but I never watched um, the next generation when it was on I think it was BBC 2 they used to put it on didn't it they was, yeah. and I just never did I, I always found it was a bit too much talking and being serious but um, but I you know I think it was about two years ago that I sat and got really into Star Trek and you know I think it's brilliant great series to jump into and I think it's good to start at the beginning because there's so much fun to be had uh, there's so many great episodes and characters so definitely check it out check it out and check uh it. thanks for having me Benji well, a, a pleasure to be here. Um, you're you're no stranger to the the realm of podcasts. Where can people uh, hear you uh, with your podcast banter? <laughs> banter might be a bit strong. Um, well, if you haven't got incredibly bored of hearing from me in this podcast, you can hear in another one called the Jerry Anderson Podcast, where I have a, a, an equally lovely co-host as Benji uh, Richard James, who's you know been an alien in space precinct and he's been a cool in... cool guy what else was he in sir gadabout do you remember that did you ever watch that sir... show yes i do yes he was i think sir suggestion in sir gadabout maybe or it's one of those anyway lovely chat when we talk jerry anderson and we you know have interviews and all that sort of stuff um and uh at a similar similar 
uh, irreverence setting as the Benji and Nick show, I think. <laughs> I remember Richard did a he did a series a few years ago. I think it's just something he made himself, where he played this sort of ex sci fi guy. But for some reason, I always remember him mentioning these fictional aliens called the Zolons um, in it. For some reason, <laughs> and it's just I don't know why. I just suddenly thought of it. I just remember him, remember him saying the Zolons. Um, don't know where I was really going with that. But yeah, bring back the Zolons, whatever they are. I, I, I agree. We should start a campaign. I'll go onto the, uh, the Parliament <laughs> website immediately and start a, a petition. Bring back the Zolons. Excellent. Well, there we have it. Uh, what, what, would you, what do you think that me and Nick should cover next week, Jamie? Um, oh, well, you know, because we've spoken about it so much, I really do think you should do Starfleet now. OK, well, OK. <laughs> Why not, eh? Why not? Okay, Condemned then, so, you both. Well, well it'll, be inter- it'll be interesting to see uh, how that goes. Um, I'm sure our emails uh, will be filled up with people uh, with, with various opinions um, of that. <laughs> Great. So, um, it's now time to bring our mouths closer to the microphones. Uh, thank you I'm for here. listening, and uh, goodbye. Goodbye, everybody. Don't forget to rate and review us. Tally-ho. Pressing stop now. Kerchung.